Hey, beautiful friends. Welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I'm going to read a couple of statements from a book titled Wealth from Within by Hannah Beer. And Hannah is graciously joining me today for this conversation. But there's a few things that I want to read from the book to really set the tone of our conversation. So first, it goes without saying that having the financial resources to care for yourself and your family makes life intimately safer and more comfortable. I don't think any of us can question that. And no, you don't have to change anything that is essential to who you are in order to get your happy money reality. You can be as introverted, outspoken, quirky, or elegant as you like to be. You can be you and still have all your needs met, desires fulfilled, and then some. So friends, we've had a couple of episodes previously where we talked about money mindset, and this is a new fresh take on money mindset. And Hannah has navigated her own money mindset and then written the book to help others navigate money mindset and really live a fulfilling, fruitful life. And I'm happy to share her with you today because I read her book and let me tell you, everything is highlighted, underlined, <laughs> notes to the side, notes in the cover. Um, so it was very valuable. And I think you're going to gain some really great, fantastic, fabulous, and new perspectives in relationship to money and how you can reframe any negative thoughts you have about receiving money and growing your business and actually accepting the money that is being handed over to you and not preventing yourself from asking for it, but being able to receive it and receive it with an open heart. Because ultimately at the end of the, the day, God does want abundance, abundance for us. And we can look back at the Proverbs 31 woman, and she is the perfect example. And I'll link in a previous episode about her in the show notes as well. So you can go check that out. But anyway, I'm going to stop talking now because there's so much value to unpack and I don't want to delay. So without further ado, Hannah Beer, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Robin, I'm so honored and excited to be here. I can't wait to dive in. Yes, I'm super happy, as I said before in the intro, that you are here and joining me. And I would love for you to tell the listeners just a little bit about your story. You don't have to go too far back or too in-depth, but just tell the listeners a little bit about your story and what brought you to the point of where you are today, doing the work you're doing and writing the book. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I grew up in a very traumatic, tumultuous childhood. I'm half American, I'm half German, and on both of my sides of the family, um, there are patterns of extreme poverty. So on my dad's side, who is American, my this side of the family also still lives in quite a lot of poverty to this day. And then on my mom's side, my both of my grandparents were child refugees during World War II, um, fled to Germany from Eastern Europe and arrived in a country that was basically rubble. And so all throughout my childhood and my teenage years in my early 20s, I always felt terrified of money just absolutely like shell-shocked and terrified. I always felt like there was no point in planning. There was no point in making, and like I, it was just like the future was so blurry and so terrifying to me. And it always felt like everything could be taken away in an instant, like nothing was safe. I, I was just so lost and so scared and everything felt really overwhelming. Um, I didn't really know what to do with my life. So I was like, oh, I guess I'm going to study fashion. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, go into fashion. It's creative. It could be nice. And then as I was in, in university, I had a lot more time on my hands and I started um, spending more time with myself. And I realized that these, this dark cloud that I was sitting in was really crushing me. Like I was so depressed. I was so anxious. I could hardly get out of bed. And that's kind of how my journey to finding, um, you know, like the light at the end of the tunnel kind of began. A big source of my struggle at the time was money, where I didn't trust myself that I could have a successful career. I didn't trust myself to know how to generate money, how to keep money, how to let money grow. Um, it felt like in other areas of my life, I was able to find answers. But money was the one thing that just no matter what I did, didn't feel right, didn't feel good. And even when, you know, I found my connection to to source, to, you know, I, Jesus found me 
I'm not Christian, but I've had many, many experiences with Jesus. And I love reading the Bible. And I just had this experience of like overwhelming, all encompassing love. And I started to experience the state in more areas of my life. You know, I started to experience how good my body can feel, how good friendships, relationships can feel, how good, you know, my connection to a greater force can feel. And yet money was still the last part of my life that just always felt like a punch in the gut. And so I spent many years exploring that for myself because I realized I can't escape money. You know, how come everything else in my life gets to feel so good? But this thing that I'm engaging with every single day, that's a part of every single area of my life that I cannot escape, no matter how hard I try. Um, I just didn't want to live my life constantly feeling so such a complicated relationship with it. And I wanted to explore a healthier, more fruitful way of doing money. And, and then over time, my goal came that I wanted money to be as blissful as the bliss that I experienced in other ways in my life. And so you know, everybody listening, you are very much connected to your faith. So you felt in your body something that just, you know, I'm getting goosebumps even just thinking about it, right? Like, like it saved my life to to find that, you know, whatever the word is, like, it's just, it saved me. And over time, my goal became, what if money gets to be as blissful as that? What if money gets to feel that good, that safe, that loving, that comforting, that nourishing, and I realized that money can be that because money is an expression of love, of the love that is the love that flows through everything. Mm, that's so fascinating. Okay, so let's talk about this because you mentioned the family. And, you know, I grew up in a home where my mom had experienced a lot of trauma and she went from riches to racks, literally, like lost everything when my grandparents divorced, which was a tumultuous experience for her in and of itself. And so that, that fear kind of always loomed around us. And to this day, that thought still can creep in. Like, what if we lost everything? What if, you know, so, you know, holding on to jobs, holding on to career paths, all of those things has always been so important to me, like just to escape the, the thought of, anything could be taken away, you know? And obviously with faith, like I'll always have Jesus. I'll always have God. I don't have to fear in that regards, but it would be a totally different story, totally different journey if we didn't have income, right? So how, you know, I think that this actually probably plagues a lot of people. And I would love for you to talk about, Hannah, how you discovered the courage to make yourself happy. You kind of touched on that. And I love that you bring in how Jesus found you, because I think when we, when we discover that relationship, happiness is, it's just unquestionable. It just happens because we don't live in a state of constant fear and worry anymore when we trust him and we bring him into our hearts. Um, but you also through that talked about the, the familial relationships and, reviewing um kind of the brain and those experiences of of how epigenetically like that trauma is passed down from generation to generation so talk us through how you navigated that and how you switched i guess the flipped the switch on that conversation in your own mind yeah to me when i look back at my own journey with money the theme that pops in is the theme of finding my own power, of discovering that I am capable. It is safe, right, and good to make money. Um, abundance is, it, it is the state of the world. Abundance is, and the ability to become really resourceful. And so when I first, you know, when the light first came through this like extremely dark cloud that I was sitting in, I thought like, save me, save me. And then the love that I received that I wasn't saved, and but I was shown how to strengthen myself, you know, how to, how to create things for myself. And so often I get questions about manifestation, you know, how do you manifest money? And now my favorite way to manifest money is to earn a lot of it and to know that I can do it, you know? And so I discovered for myself that the most loving thing to want for us is to become amazing receivers of love creators of love and money is an expression of love 
And so with my clients, the same, the same theme repeats where we often feel, you know, downtrodden or depressed or like we can't do it or like life isn't safe or we're not aware of the love that is all around us. And then money shows us, money grows us up, money strengthens us because it, it's so relentlessly kind in the fact that it doesn't lie to us. It keeps pushing us in the, in the direction of where we want to go. And so for anybody listening who feels like money has been complicated, my question is, why might that be a good thing for you? Why is the fact that your financial situation is the way it is and your family background with money is the way it is? Why might that be a good thing? Why might that be the exact thing that you need to strengthen you and to, and if you've been praying and praying for help and you've probably been receiving help and yet something, you know, hasn't been given to you, I wonder if that is something that you need to grow within yourself you know, if that kind of makes sense. So I, to me, money grew me up because I grew up with very emotionally immature parents and I always longed for guidance. I always longed for an elder to take me by the hand to show me things, you know, and I've, I've received that in many different ways in my life. Um, but just the truth that I saw in my finances about the state of who I was at the time was the most sobering thing to Come across and it was exactly what I needed to see and hear in order to to evolve. So something you said that I really want to emphasize because we've had conversations about like the new age philosophies and manifestation and you know all of those things and I'll link some of those in the show notes as well but when people come to you and say how do I manifest money or how do you manifest money you work for it you, you work for it and then you can manifest it through investing, right? Through properly managing it, properly spending it, saving it, all of those things. But money doesn't just fall out of the sky to us. Like we can't create that. And I like that you said you work for it and then you take action to manage it because I think at the end of the day, that's key. And I mean, we we can have all the material things in the world, but if we are idolizing them, then they can be taken away because that's not what God has intended. We're supposed to idolize him first and foremost. He will always give us abundance if we trust him, but he does expect us to work. The Bible has numerous verses about that, about working hard and not being lazy and not, and really then managing and respecting the gifts that we have. So I love that that was your response. I love that. And I want to expand on this a little bit. So because on the surface, money may seem really shallow, really materialistic. But if we look a little more closely, we see that money is an expression of appreciation and love between people. Back when there was a barter system, um, we would express appreciation and say, hey, I'm going to give you a pig and you can give me some corn and we're going to support each other and help each other. I'm going to work really hard to raise, you know, great pigs and you're going to work really hard to grow great corn so we as a community can thrive. So everybody has a part in helping us as a community thrive. Getting to have a business, getting to have a job, getting to contribute, getting to get up every single day and work and do something that benefits all of us is an honor. It's a pleasure. It's so healthy and wonderful. And, and at the same time, I do understand that there are many toxic work environments. There are many ways of working and many ways that we choose to work that are detrimental to our health. If we work blissfully and if we understand, you know, working is expressing love, receiving money is receiving love, giving money is giving love, then we can see money as this exchange of love on planet earth this like gigantic flow of love that flows around, you know, today, like tomorrow, there's a handyman coming to my home because I bought like, like a hanging chair, like a little hammock swing. And I'm like, I'm going to express my love to him for the service that he's going to do for my family by giving him money. Right. And so now when you're engaging with money, think about it as love and appreciation. And this is also a great practice to help become a more a, a better receiver of money because then when somebody wants to give you money, why wouldn't you let them love you? You know, you're just as deserving of love and care and safety and warmth and comfort and freedom and excitement as everybody else on planet Earth. And so it becomes less of this like materialistic, like weirdly charged thing. It's more like, 
it is safer and good to let love flow. It's safer and good to give love and receive love. And um, I hope this gives, you know, you guys, like the listeners, a place to start in thinking about money differently and discovering that it is safe, right and good to, to play with money, to have fun with money. Money has been so misunderstood. It really is a wonderful medium. Even if we like deleted money tomorrow, you know, all the digital money and just threw away all of our bills and coins, we would pretty much like five minutes later, again, have a system of appreciation and love through some form of an exchange, you know? So that that is an insight that changed everything for me. And I hope it's helpful for everybody listening. You know, that that is huge. That's that That perspective is huge. And as you were talking and you were saying love and appreciation, it's also an expression of gratitude. You're thanking someone by giving them something in return. And it just happens to be money. So for anyone who is in a service industry, and I think a lot of entrepreneurs, and you can probably speak to this, those of us who are providing something that is intellectual property, we are helping others through our experiences. And maybe we have, and, and you know, when you look at this, we've, we may or may not have invested money in gathering all of the knowledge and wisdom that we have, but it's part of who we are. And when we look at it from that perspective, if you're helping someone else you know, as a life coach, as a business coach, as, you know, a doctor, a lawyer, anything you are giving from yourself and it's okay for someone else to show love and appreciation and gratitude for what you have done for them. Because at the end of the day, we're all working to transform lives, to make the world a better place. So if we can accept that love, gratitude, and grace then and appreciation, then I think it makes it so much easier to continue to serve and feel fulfilled and accept the gratitude and then express gratitude back. It does. I think that makes sense. What I just said. <laughs> it makes perfect sense for me. I just love that picture. It's so practical. You know, it instantly makes me a better receiver of money. And I keep, I remember I used to be so blocked with this when I was, I was a babysitter when I was a teenager and the family were so generous and they kept giving me like nail polish and beauty stuff. And I was always like, no, no. Um, you know, I was like, modest and humble or whatever. And so it completely spoiled their fun of giving to me, but I didn't realize it. I thought that that was the polite thing to do to like dance around me like, no, you should not. It's too much. And then the grandma took me aside and said, Hannah, if somebody wants to give you a gift, you don't spoil their joy in giving to you. You just say, thank you. And you zip it. <laughs> and that was a life-changing experience for me. So now when somebody wants to work with me, wants to have me on their podcast, wants to be friends with me, and I'm really you know, it's wonderful love to receive, then I'll just say, thank you. And I receive it, you know? And so anybody who needs to kind of, you know, reassess their relationship to receiving, kind of check in, like, are you doing the, like the weird dance that I used to do? Or can you just say, thank you so much. I'm so excited to receive this from you. I really appreciate it. And then you just shut your lips and you enjoy <laughs> what you were just given. It is such a joy to get to discover somebody or something or a product or a service that just feels like a soul. Yes. That feels like a click that feels like, Oh, I'm so excited. Let people have that experience. Just yeah. let them start, let them thank you for it in the term, in the form of money, let them love you in the form of money and just start to work through any receiving blocks that are sitting in your body that might make it feel like Ugh. it is just love. This is for a long time before I was a money healer, I was specializing in emotional healing and trauma release. And then my clients had all these amazing money side effects on the side. And I was like, what's going on? But really we help them become comfortable with love, receiving love, having a lot of love, feeling comfortable and well in their own bodies. And then they were able to be much better receivers with money as well. It's very deeply connected. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I, I love that. And it's not, it's not external. It's not um, crystals or tarot cards or astrology. It's it's the healing from within. And especially when we tap into our faith and allow God to come in and nourish us and nourish our souls, we're going to experience healing faster and more gracefully too. It's not going to be as 
I guess, dramatic, traumatic, all the bumps in the road, we can actually heal from within and then be able to accept the love and kindness, the gratitude, the appreciation, and all of those other values from other people. I love that. That's so beautiful. Oh, thank you, Hannah. So, okay. So you kind of touched on this. You talked about um, receiving language. And I think that your example is so spot on. I always have had trouble receiving. And I'm wondering if, I wonder why that is. And I have gotten so much better. And I think it's because someone at some point in time said to me, just say, thank you. Like if someone gives you a compliment, you don't have to say, oh, well, oh, this ratty old thing or, oh, oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> it's thank you. And that's all you have to say. You don't have to make an excuse and you don't have to, but I love what you said about don't take away their joy from giving you this, be it a compliment, be it money, be it anything, just be a gracious receiver. So do, is there anything you want to add to that in terms of the receiving language? Yeah. And I want to expand on this because um, a question I get a lot when people first come to work with me and they'll say, well, how long does it take until I get, you know, results, whatever that means, like feel better with my money, make a lot of money because they heard that you have to heal first and then the money shows up. And I always say we do both at the same time. We can do the emotional healing around money and turn you into an amazing, just somebody who's really comfortable with money and loves always creating lots of money every day. And we can give you some like very practical everyday tools so that you can earn more money, have more money, enjoy money, even before you're healed. And so the receiving language was born out of that because when I was so, so, so blocked around money, the thing that helped me through my day were scripts. And so I just made a commitment to myself. I'm just going to say this in that situation. I'm going to say that in this situation, no matter, no, regardless of how I feel. You know, so if somebody gives me something, I just say, thank you. And I shut up. Uh, if a client says, uh, you know, I want to work with you, I just say, great, when would you like to start? And I shut up. And so on the inside, I was still like, you know, freaking out, I'm like, oh my God, no, just completely losing it. And all of my buttons were pushed and I was not able to receive. I felt so terrible. And yet I had my scripts. And it was kind of like I was just holding on to my scripts and just going from one script to the next to navigate my life. And it was so helpful. So for any of you, any of you who know that you've got a very complicated relationship with money or that there is are some things that you would like to do healing on, give yourself the gift and, and do that. And it doesn't mean that you have to wait. Your money gets to improve starting this very moment. And a great and very simple way is to learn what I call the language of receiving. Start to write some scripts for yourself. What are the moments in your life when you kind of, you know, stand in your own way? Like, what are the moments in your life that happen over and over where you don't really know what to do or what to say? I'm very introverted. And when I was, I was, I lived in many different countries before. And one country where I lived was the Netherlands. I lived in Amsterdam for some time. And I would do a lot of in-person networking, just like terrifying for an introvert. And so I had a script, you know, and I got so many clients through networking, and so I was like, well, if all my clients come through networking, then I just have to go to more events and actually show myself in person. And so my script was at the time, I would walk into a room, I would kind of think about who do I want to connect with just intuitively, who seems nice. And then I would walk over to them and be like, hey, I don't think we've met yet. What's your name? And I would pretend I was the host. So I would be like, I'm going to pretend I have the confidence of the host and walk up to them and say, we haven't met yet. What's your name? And I made some of my closest friends, you know, I met some really amazing people and I got so many clients just using this one script. On the inside, I was terrified. On the outside, it was working every single time. You know, nobody shut me down. A conversation ensued in some way. Um, so I love that we, we're kindred spirits, this, this introvert experience. Like I can so relate to this play this role playing in your head before you go to a networking event, because I've done it a hundred times and I love to go to scan the room. Who looks nice? Like, <laughs> you know, that introverted fear that is in instilled in us, you know, that we're so afraid to put ourselves out there in a way that is unique. And that, that energy drain that all of these events actually um, stimulate in us. So I, I love that you said that. Okay. So 
okay, we talked about the receiving language, which I love. And I love the, the idea of these scripts. And it's totally different than a mantra or something or an affirmation. It literally is a tool to guide you through different experiences. So I love that so much. Okay, I want to read a paragraph um, from the book about abundance. Abundance is the joy of having your sleeves rolled up, hands dirty, working away until time and space slip away. Abundance is the energetic state of plenty, of overflow, of richness that reminds you that there will always be more money to create, more opportunities to act on, more expansion to experience. You will fully understand that the journey is the gift, even though the financial resources you are creating in the process are wonderful too. And I love that so much much because when we look at scripture we're told it's the love of money that is the root of all evil and you aren't saying love money you are saying work hard create it for yourself and love the exchange and the appreciation and the kindness and the gratitude that go along with it and the honor and joy of getting to give um, my clients come to me for money healing, and we do a lot of healing on work. How work feels, what work means. To me, work is joyful giving. And I know we're going to talk about the, the honeybee in a moment, because the honeybee archetype is what taught me all about work. And so any of you guys who are listening who are like, work just does not feel good. It's not supposed to be that way. Work is getting to give. You know, if you've got children, I've got a little toddler, I hear like screaming and cackling in the background with her babysitter. It's so much joy to get to give to her. And so that's how work is supposed to feel. That's the joy of giving, of having your hands dirty, of getting to create and build. And so at the core of this, there needs to be this awareness inside of you that you are worthwhile, that you're worthy, that you're wonderful, you're divinely created. You have so much to give. And so you need to discover your own loveliness again to really enjoy, you know, just how healthy and how strengthening and what a what a privilege it is to get to give and to get to do your part in our community. Mm, I love that so much. And it, and it was so eloquent, eloquent, eloquently. <laughs> my my ability to say words sometimes um, so eloquently written. It's just beautiful. So I love that perspective and I, I can really, really re relate to it. Okay. So you mentioned the honeybee and I think this is the perfect segue. So let's talk about that beautiful little honeybee. Yeah. Yeah. So when the adults and humans in my life weren't able to give me answers, you know, all of you guys listening, you know, that sometimes answers come from, you know, more intangible sources. And one of the one of the um, dreams that I had was about the honeybee. She came to visit me, just like Jesus comes to visit me every now and then to give me advice and help. And she came and said, I'm going to teach you about work. And she showed me life from her perspective. And she showed me how blissful it is to work, how wonderful it is to be in community, how much energy she feels getting to work every day, getting to explore the meadow and collect nectar and make honey. So honey is created in, in the dark. And I just love that. That is such a perfect metaphor for what we all go through as we're creating money, right? Like we market and we start businesses and we work away in our jobs. And a lot of the abundance is created in the dark until it is, you know, in visible form. And so the honeybee really like taught me everything I need to know about work and about blissfully working. And so many of my clients come to me and they'll say, I'm so exhausted from work. And the honeybee taught me that work is meant to be energizing. And so any of you who are working and you feel drained, you've got it flipped the opposite way. Like you need to flip it all around and do it the honeybee way. And whenever I'm feeling like a difficult relationship with, with money or work, I always pretend I'm the honeybee for a moment, just buzzing through her day. And it instantly puts me in the right mindset and in the right relationship to work and service. You, in the book, you also wrote, um, the abundance of opportunities on my to-do list excites me and lets me know that there will always be more to do, more to discover, and more to build and create. And I just, I love that perspective so much. I, I love to work. I enjoy working. Like being idle does not entertain me at all. Like I really like to dig in and get things done. And 
I like to see that there's a purpose behind what I'm doing. And so I love the fact that you use the honeybee as this, this symbol to represent hard work, but joy and bliss at the same time. Beautiful. Yeah. I love that you brought up the to-do list because I feel like that's something many people are stressed about when they've got so many things on their to-do list and then more things are being added all the time. And we always feel, you know, I'm behind, I'm not doing it fast enough and not productive enough. It's like, everything's like looming over me. Your to-do list is never supposed to be done. You know, we can call it a get to-do list. We can call it a list of opportunities. Because that's how the money, the, the honeybee sees it. Like she sees the flower meadow and she's not like, oh my God, I need to get to every single one of these flowers in the next 30 minutes. If not, no, there's always going to be more flowers. There's always going to be more pollen and nectar and honey to be created. And so it's the same with your to-do list. Your to-do list isn't meant to ever be accomplished. Just do the things that will make the biggest difference in your life. What are the most profitable things that you can do on your to-do list that bring you the most joy and, and emotional fulfillment and, and money and, and comfort and relaxation so you can enjoy, you know, the things that matter most in your life. But anybody who's like, oh my God, to-do list is a trigger word for me. You know, most people misunderstand. They think that they should be done with their to-do list at some point. No, you'll never be done. If you have things on your to-do list, you're a very lucky person. It means that you've got ideas and opportunities to give and be of service. That is amazing. It, it basically means you're living. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. All right, Hannah, this has been fabulous. I loved everything about your book. I adore you. You're just the sweetest thing ever. Would you tell the listeners where they can connect with you, learn more from you, get your book, and perhaps even work with you? Absolutely. My website is hannahbeer.com. H-A-N-N-A-B-I-E-R.com. You can find my book on my website. It's called Wealth From Within. You can also sign up to my free subliminal that has all the messages and all the mindsets in the book that I believe as a subliminal audio. So your body can kind of, it's like bathing in, in like the idea of money bliss. So if what we talked about today is resonating, there's a little audio track. You can just, it's like, it's like your, it's like your tea bag and, and it's the water in a really beautiful cup. And you can just dip in the money bliss kind of way of life and let your body feel the comfort of that so you're welcome to sign up for that you're also welcome to follow me on instagram my handle is hannah money bliss and say hi thank you so much for being here listeners thank you for being here as well and if you enjoyed this episode will you please be so kind to leave a rating and review because that is how more guests like hannah who can inspire us and really give us new insight fresh insight on how to to live and work and be the person that God's called us to be. That's how I get them on the show. So if you please be, please be so kind to leave a rating and review, I would be forever grateful. And if you know someone who could use this information, I'm pretty sure we all probably know someone who struggles with their money relationship. So if you know someone, please share the episode with them so that we can spread the love and together go farther. Hannah, thanks for being here. I'll see you all next week.